Welcome to a proof of Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem states that if f of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b and f of a equals f of b, then there exists at least one number c in the open interval from a to b such that f prime of c equals zero. As an illustration of Rolle's theorem, let's consider the four graphs shown here. Notice all four functions are continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. Next, notice that f of a equals f of b, meaning at the two endpoints the y coordinates are the same, and therefore Rolle's theorem tells us there exists at least one number c, which should be an x value, in the open interval from a to b, such that f prime of c equals zero, meaning at that location the tangent line would be horizontal or have a slope of zero. So looking at the second graph, notice how it shows where each of the functions would have a horizontal tangent line and therefore the location of these horizontal tangent lines would be where f prime of c is equal to zero. One thing to notice though is that Rolle's theorem only guarantees there exists at least one x value equal to c where f prime of c equals zero. It doesn't indicate how many there are or how to find them. Now let's prove Rolle's theorem. We'll first let f of a equal f of b and we'll consider three cases. Case one, we'll let f of x equal f of a for all x in the open interval from a to b. Case two, we'll let f of x be greater than f of a for some x in the open interval from a to b. And then finally, case three, we'll let f of x be less than f of a for some x in the open interval from a to b. So for case one, if f of x equals f of a for all x in the open interval, then f of x is constant and the graph is a horizontal line segment. As a result, f prime of c equals zero for all values of x equals c in the open interval from a to b. As an illustration of case one, let's look at the graph below. Notice how f of x equals f of a, which also equals f of b for all x in the open interval. And therefore we have a graph of a horizontal line segment. Notice at any point on this line segment, if we select a point on the function, the tangent line would also be a horizontal line with a slope of zero, which means the derivative would equal zero, and therefore f prime of c equals zero for all x equals c in the open interval. Now for case two, f of x is greater than f of a for some x in the open interval. Since f of x is continuous on the closed interval, by the extreme value theorem, which we'll view in just a moment, f of x has a maximum at some x equals c in the closed interval from a to b. So for a quick review of the extreme value theorem, the extreme value theorem states if f of x is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, then f of x has both a minimum and a maximum on the closed interval. So again, by the extreme value theorem, we know f of x has a maximum at some x equals c in the closed interval, but since f of x is greater than f of a, f of x has a maximum for some x equals c on the open interval from a to b. And since f of c is a maximum, we know f prime of c would be equal to zero. Again, to illustrate case two, let's look at the graph below. If f of x is greater than f of a for some x in the open interval, this would mean the function would have to be increasing at some point in the interval, let's say here, but because f of a equals f of b, that means the function would also have to be decreasing back down to f of b. And we know if a function changes from increasing to decreasing, we have at least a relative or local maximum. But again, by the extreme value theorem, we know we have a global or absolute maximum at some x equals c, which for this graph would be here. And if this is the maximum, we know the slope of the tangent line would be zero and therefore f prime of c equals zero at some c in the interval. And now for our last case, case three, f of x is less than f of a for some x in the open interval from a to b. Since f of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, again by the extreme value theorem, we know f of x has a minimum at some x equals c in the closed interval. But since f of x is less than f of a for some x in the open interval, f of x has a minimum for some x equals c in the open interval. 
And since f of c is a minimum, f prime of c equals zero. Again, to illustrate case three, let's consider the graph shown below. If f of x is less than f of a for some x in the open interval, at some point the function would have to be decreasing. But because f of a equals f of b, that means the function would then have to be increasing in order to reach f of b. And we know if a function changes from decreasing to increasing, we know we have at least a relative or local minimum. But again, by the extreme value theorem, we know there must be one x value where we have a global or absolute minimum. In this case, in the open interval, which from this graph would be at this location here. So this x value here would be the value of c guaranteed by Rolle's theorem. And we know at this minimum, the slope of the tangent line would be zero, and therefore f prime of c equals zero. So notice in each case, there's at least one value of c in the open interval, such that f prime of c equals zero. And again, before we go, I do want to emphasize that Rolle's theorem tells us at least one number c exists, but it does not tell us how many values of c exist or how to find them. Referring back to the first graph that we looked at, notice how these functions have several values of c where f prime of c would be equal to zero. But for our proof, we only had to prove there exists at least one c in the open interval. When using Rolle's theorem, after verifying Rolle's theorem applies, to find the values of c, or at least the guaranteed value of c, we need to set f prime of x equal to zero and solve. I hope you found this helpful.